Welcome back to Porsche House. I'm going to show you nine modifications that have been done to this 2015 Porsche Macan. The best of these modifications hasn't actually yet been done. I'll be doing it later in this video. So make sure you stick around for that. I can't believe I've done that. What a stupid mistake to make. It's a fantastic looking mod. Some people think it's a little bit dickish. I hope it looks good. I'm praying that it looks good. Let's crack on with it. Now the first mod that I've done here is not something seen very often on SUVs, I've lowered the suspension. So I've used H&R springs which lower the suspension by 40 millimeters, which is about that much, four centimeters. Now um, I kind of think it looks better because it's got a, a lower gap between the wheel and the arch and it gives that altogether sportier look. As I say, it's not something that's generally found on SUVs or not many people do it to SUVs because they prefer the, the kind of the high driving style or the ability to go off-road. I won't be doing any off-road in this. It's, uh, an altogether sportier look. Now the springs themselves were 324 pounds fitting and the laser alignment was 624 pounds. So altogether that's about 948 pounds for the total job on all four corners. Now this was one of the mods which was already done to the car before I picked it up. If you notice this bottom section here, not all of them come with this spitter and if they do come with it, they're always in black. So the previous owner of this car has uh, had the foresight of painted in white, which I think looks a lot more aggressive and a lot more stylish. Now, if you are, if you if your McCann doesn't have one of these on, you can generally pick them up for around about 180, 190 pounds. And I would say painting on top of that is probably maybe another 75 to 100 pounds. So all in all, you know, 300 pounds, you're gonna get this more aggressive look, which I think looks fantastic. And it, it just fits on with a few bolts, really, really easy, but really, really necessary in my opinion. It's, um, it's a fantastic looking mod and yeah, it changes the front end of the car. The next mod is the roof bars on this car. These roof bars to fit are an absolute dream. And I picked them up for a bargain as well. Generally, they're about 250 pounds. These are genuine and official Porsche products. Uh, but I picked these up for 70 pounds on the used market. There are a few popping up from time to time. So it's very well worth checking the likes of eBay, Gumtree or whatever um, sort of sales sites you use. Um, but these really fit on really, really easily. I've had them for the Cayenne as well. And they were a complete arse to fit because they have clamps which come over the metalwork and under the door seals here but these just fit straight onto these uh, nicely pre-fitted roof rails and I feel that it offers the ability to you know add things like the roof box add things like a canoe or your bikes on top with ultimate ease but I'm a sucker for roof boxes and I think this car looks amazing with the roof box I think I need to change that though Donna TPN TV what the hell is that private plate this is obviously down to personal preference. Some people think it's a little bit dickish, um, but the reason I love this one is obviously because it just basically spells my name. In the UK, you've got to pay for your registration plate. This one was about 750 quid. And then you pay like an 80 pounds retention fee to transfer it, transfer the old reg off and put the new reg on. Like I say, some hate it. I don't mind it if it spells your name and it's not offensive. Next up is a tracker which I've fitted to the car. It's the 35 pound tracker called True Track from Amazon. I'll pop the link in the description. It does have a yellow subscription uh, which is like 65 pounds but it en enables you to sort of know the whereabouts of your vehicle at all times and it gives you uh, sort of routes that the car has traveled on distances traveled uh, speeds and things like that uh, so it's good if you've got maybe other people using the car or you're away on holiday and you want to always be able to track your vehicle uh, it hooks straight up to the battery now in this car obviously I'd be a little bit dumb to hook this up to my battery of my car and then tell the whole world where it is. So I've rerouted the tracker in this car to somewhere else, so it's hidden somewhere else within this vehicle. But if you wanted to put it in your car, then the battery is located under here and uh, it's really, really easy to hook up and then start your subscription. Sticking with the back end, these boot liners are a really good idea. I picked this up second hand for around about 50 pounds. And basically it's really good at protecting the underneath the carpet underneath. If you do a lot of trips to like the beach or the countryside like I do, and you're coming back in and you're getting your towels and your shoes, which are thick with mud and sand, these are really good because they just pop straight out and then you can just wipe them down and get rid of all the crap which is on them. Uh, so there's, they're about 50 pounds, get them on the second hand market quite easily. Sticking with the back of the car, actually, the Porsche logo and the Macan S logo on the back are finished in this like plasticky chrome kind of thing. I haven't had the chance to do this mod yet, but hopefully by the time this video is edited, it will be done. So you should see what it's like on screen now. The silver versus the matte black. 
That whole process should cost 10 to 15 pounds. I'm probably guilty of talking about this iCarsoft tool a little bit too much on this channel, but there's a very, very, very good reason why I'm including it in this video. Uh, not only will this tool allow you to diagnose all of your main systems like engines, airbags, ABS reset, do special functions like DPF regenerations, electronic park and brake, but one of the outstanding features, and this is why I believe every single Porsche owner should have one of these tools, it allows you to check the genuine mileage of the vehicles. Let's say bef before I owned this car, the previous owner had clocked the mileage on it. Uh, this tool would allow me to see what the genuine and official mileage was. It reads the mileage off the ECU, not the instrument cluster so um, I believe it's really really important for everybody to have one of these because it's going to give you uh, peace of mind and uh, clarity over what the genuine mileage of your vehicle is and it could save you from buying a lemon save you from buying a car, uh, um, a car which has been clocked or misused and the mileage being put back somewhere along the line I know I go on about it a lot but this is really important link in the description it's the iCars of POR version 3.0 so mod number eight and is one of the best mods you can do to these mechans if you're interested in better performance and fuel saving it is this race chip now this race chip costs like 369 pounds. It gives me about 20% better fuel consumption. I'm yet to do sort of full on calculations as to whether it's actually giving me that, but I am noticing so far that it's giving me better MPG, better performance. It gives me about, me about well, according to the figures in any case, it's about 35 um, brake horsepower extra on top of what I've already got, which I think is about 258. So that's going to take me up to about 290-ish brake horsepower. Uh, for a big three litre, two ton lump like this, it's not bad going. It's quite easy to fit. You just need to unplug a few plugs, plug a few plugs back in, put the box in, etc., and it automatically does it all for you. Kind of puts a temporary map on the engine and it allows the PDK gear changes to change just that little bit quicker, which is where you get your fuel saving from. And the good thing is it's removable at any point. So if you wanted to put your car in for a warranty, you can take it back out and there'd be no evidence that this chip was ever installed to the vehicle. I'm not working on affiliates or anything for this, I promise you, but I have installed these into a lot of my cars because I am happy with the performance that it gives and the fuel saving that it gives. Now, I said I was gonna leave the best modification to last, so I hope it looks good. I'm praying that it looks good. Let's crack on with it. Now this has potential to look absolutely brilliant or could look crap. Um, two things I've noticed is that it's probably gonna need spacers on. The gaps are quite high on the front. It'll probably just need a settle, I would think. It's hard to gauge how good it looks unless we're sort of out in the real world. But if it does look crap, then just don't follow what I'm doing. Before I take it out in the real world, this wheel tyre package costs £1,648, which is actually pretty good when you consider I got the wheel, I got the wheels uh, recoded in the silver colour and the tyres as well, £1,648. It'll kind of soften the blow a little bit if it doesn't work out as planned because I could just sell them on and it's not such a massive outlay. Normally when I'm buying wheels, it's easy £3,500 a pop, so it's quite a cheap package to try. I can't believe I've done that. What a stupid mistake to make. What I've done is I've gone and installed the wheels and tyre package and I've completely forgot to install TPMS sensors into the wheels. So now when I've got the ignition turned on and when I've got the engine turned on, I've got the TPMS warning light and I've also got the TPMS message to say that there are no or I can't find the TPMS sensors in the wheels. Schoolboy error. It's not the end of the world. I'll have to find a set of TPMS sensors. Hopefully, I can pick a set up for relatively cheap. I do know that from Porsche, they do cost around about, I think it's like over £100 each. So that's going to be quite expensive. So I'll try and find some uh, cheaper ones. What an idiot. The new wheels are on. I think they look absolutely beautiful. Let me know what you think about these wheels in the comments. I think they are very, very nice and they just add a nice, classy touch to the car. You might disagree which is absolutely fine. But I think these look really, really good. And mind you, I always have this opinion, whenever I put a new set of wheels on, I always think, oh yeah, they look amazing. And then I stop and think about it, and then I realize, actually, they're not that good. But I don't know. I think these will do good. I think they'll be nice. One thing I have noticed is that the clearance here between the spoke of the wheel and the caliber is just, my, you can't even, I can't even fit my finger in there. It's so small, it's not so bad on the back, but they've given me these like crappy wheel centers where the uh, the badge is 
too big for the set for the uh, the the center itself so I'll be looking to change those but I do think they look good in black very happy with this car right now let me know what you think in the comments so that's it for today's video guys nothing too difficult as I say most of these jobs you can do in your own garage or on your driveway or outside of your house but a few of the jobs you probably might need to take to a specialist like the suspension uh, springs install uh, but other than that though I'm going to put the links to everything I can in the description below this video hope you've enjoyed this video uh, if you have then maybe give it a thumbs up if you haven't already then maybe hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next video